Premier League. We've had goals galore. Just look at that. So Dominic Calvert-Lewin scoring a hat-trick for Everton. Uh, they stumped new boys of West Bromwich Albion 5-2. And the Baggies had Kieran Gibbs red-carded in first-half injury time. A Slaven Bilic incidentally also sent off at the break for remonstrating with the referee. Leeds came out in top uh, in a seven-goal thriller. Uh, they beat new boys, fellow new boys, Fulham by four goals to three. Uh, Crystal Palace secured their biggest ever win away to Manchester United. Uh, Will Saha getting two in that 3-1 victory. Uh, and sub uh, Eddie Nketiah scoring a late winner for Arsenal at the Emirates. Well, yes, early days, of course, as we know, as far as the table is concerned. But the three teams who played today maintain their 100% starts. Uh, Everton top, two wins from two. Same, of course, for Arsenal. And Crystal Palace also making it the perfect starts. Uh, the same can't be said, of course, as far as the bottom three are concerned, who all featured today. Uh, two losses out of two for West Brom, Fulham and West Ham. Um, for the likes of the Baggies and Fulham, they've now conceded eight and seven, respectively. Hey. Two as well, look at this. Oh, he's off. Yes! He's on! <laughs> he's on! Yes, Eddie! <laughs> Eddie! Eddie! <laughs> Eddie. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Is this Eddie? <laughs> you know what? Stop doing this camera business, man. Come on, you can't be, you no, know, can't be surprised. It happens all the time. Does that mean he's going to be getting a call from you soon? We always, we kind of always text or something, you know what I mean? Just to keep him going. But like, he's, he's on the road now. I don't need to be in his ear anymore. Yeah. You know, every now and then I'll probably get a text, just, you know what I mean? Just saying, yes, nice one, uncle. But... I'm just pleased for him, yeah. simply because he's got to do that to keep the pressure on Lacazette. So as then, if it's not happening for Lacazette, he yeah. can get his chance and do that. Sorry, did you say he calls you uncle? Yeah, most people do now. <laughs> yeah, that's where we're at now, right, isn't it? Uh, for all of us. Uh, anyway, uh, nice, nice little kind of assist, of course, with Danny Ceballos. Uh, and after what happened last time in the warm-up when there was that slight disagreement, they, of course, made up and... It's good to see, isn't it? He alluded well, to it in the interview. Well, that happens, you know, especially, you know, I think that, that that's the atmosphere that um, Mikel's created, you know, that even in the little rondo, what they was playing, they were really at it, you know what I mean, to the point where he thought the tackle was a bit hard, then he didn't fall, they had a little push, a little shove, they sorted it out straight away, and that's what should happen. You sort it out, get on with it, and then bam, look, next week they're setting up three points Arsenal. Yeah, but it won't matter to Mikel that they were far from their best. No, and you've seen how delighted he was. Yeah. Um, you know, I talked about how well they played last week. Not so well. Um, West Ham with a better side in big periods of, of the game, but they grinded out the result, which, like right, you said, Arsenal's side of, of old wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Well, talking off Mikel Arteta, let's hear now then from the Arsenal boss. Mikel, what did you and the final result? I am really happy with the three points. <laughs> but? And... Uh, and it's uh, a team to analyze properly because we have a lot of issues that we created ourselves in in many moments. Um, and it reminds me a little bit the game and faces that we had when we played them last year and we let them run. And there is no structure in the world like us sustain when someone has the ball completely free and he gives it to the opponent. So we have to improve in many things. Do you feel you got away with one tonight? Yes, but uh, I think we created uh, enough chances as well to, to win the game, but we conceded too many chances um, that were our fault. Uh, basically, we scored two wonder goals again, I think. But uh, what I like is the, um, the approach that the boys had in the last 25 minutes, where I could see them coming a little bit down, and then they lifted up. And probably a few months ago, we would have drawn or lost that game, and today we win it. And at the end, you have to find a way, because you're going to have games like this through the season. I know David really well and the type of games that he proposes, and they are really hard to beat. Did it also underline the quality you have at the top end of the pitch? Absolutely, and uh, we don't want to rely on that too much. There are some processes that have to be done much better, that today we have, in many moments, problems to resolve some situations. Um, but again, we always look at three because the players that we have up front. And when you sit on Eddie and Ketter, is that a manager's dream to take instructions like that? <laughs> uh, we know what Eddie can bring. He's a goal scorer. He's always there. He has a great uh, sense of where the ball is going to land. I think it was a really good combination again and, and three points. Very honest in your assessment. There's also sometimes some satisfaction from taking all three points when you know yourself you can play much better. 
Yes, but uh, again, I always said that this is not going to go like that. We need games like this as well to understand the things that we have to improve better. But probably they trained the best week since I've been here in terms of understanding what the game requires and positions with the ball. But then the first 15 minutes probably are the worst that we played with the ball since I arrived here. Mikhail, thanks for your time. Thank you. See just how he, he knows that was an important three points and just the way they went about their business today. Patience is a, my, a word that springs to mind for me, Ian, particularly when... You know, West Ham were giving as good as they got in the opening exchanges in that first half. Yeah, and it was it was vitally important, like you said, to, to stay in the game and continue doing what you're trying to do that, um, in the way that he set the team up to play. You know what I mean? It's the, 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 we can't play on the, on the back foot. You have to still try to keep going forward. I thought they'd done that pretty well, but you have to say West Ham did have some very, very good chances and they, they rolled their luck. But if Arsenal are going to try and get themselves back amongst it in and around the top four, then scraping through games like this and then giving the top boys a run is how they're going to do it. So if you can win games when you're playing like that, then you've got up a chance. Yeah. From West Ham's perspective, the frustration, I suppose, isn't it? The fact that you put in so much effort, showed so much energy, which was unrecognisable to last time around and still come, go home with nothing to show. Yeah, I mean, they'll be frustrated. But also, there's a lot to, to like about yeah. the performance. So David Moyes, obviously... They've not got any points yet, but the way they performed, if they play like that, they're going to win more than they're going to lose. Mm. But they have to put the chances away. And you've got that feeling when they were on top for large parts of the second half, they had to get that goal because you felt that if Arsenal did get the goal, yeah. then um, they would take the, if Arsenal got the chance, they would take it. Yeah, and by the same token, do you understand Arteta's frustration at the fact that they weren't quite at it as they yeah. have been, as we're used to seeing them in recent weeks? No, it's sloppy. Um, mm. You know, First 20 minutes, like you said, giving the ball away, no pressure on the ball. And that uh, let West Ham grow in confidence. So they'll get better. Um, but, you know, when you can grind out results, it gives confidence and gives momentum. And you know that you'll go back this week and you'll look at the game back and the things that you can do better and you'll improve. Well done, Eddie. You got the winner. Was it virtually a first touch? Almost. I think the second, maybe. But no, it's obviously nice to get on and help the team get the win. Now, you and Dennis Sabahs weren't in perfect harmony pre-match at Fulham last week, but you certainly were for the winner. Yeah, you know, obviously, it was a bit of coming together, you know, I was a bit upset with the challenge you put in, and obviously the reaction was there, but, yeah, we made that pretty quickly, apologised quickly, and get on with it, you know, that's what happens in life, and it was nice for him to obviously make the assist for me today, so it's all love now. Like I said, you were in perfect harmony there. How much was it about the weight of pass from him, and also you timing run, not to go offside? Yeah, you know, I think it was obviously a great pass across, good vision from him and I just tried to stay on side and make sure I was behind the ball, so it was a pretty easy finish from there, but yeah, it was a great ball from Danny. And for a striker, is it the best thing when the manager sends you on, get a goal, prove a point? Yeah, you know, that's all you know, I want to do, just keep trying to help the team and improving as a player and like you said, to come on and get the win is also a great feeling, so yeah, I'm delighted with the three points and the goal. Do you think it was a game, a victory tonight, Arsenal didn't necessarily craft, they dug out a win? Yeah, I think West Ham made it very difficult. I think the second half, they came out really strong and yeah, we had to keep going. You know, we knew it was going to be a patient game. We had to keep passing and keep moving and you know, the chances were there at the end and luckily you put it away. Yep, two games, two wins. Well done tonight. Thank you very much. Cheers, Eddie. Yeah, and a composed finish from the youngster in the end, wasn't it, Ian? Well, you know, it's, it's the kind of... Um, this, it's the kind of... This thing that what he's got to get a lot of credit for is, is how he stayed on side. Um, we were watching earlier on, even with... This is a lovely pass from Saka. Watch this pass. Um, but it's the way he's, he's made the run across himself so as he can stay behind the ball. Some people, because they're so close to the goal, they feel that they go forward. They, they continue to move forward. But when you watch his movement here, you see where Danny Ceballos is. He goes back towards that way, back to his right, so as he's behind the ball. It's a clever move. It's very subtle, but it's, it's vital, vitally important in staying on side, especially in this day and age where you're offside by a toenail, so he's done brilliantly there. Yeah. Assisted by Danny Ceballos. And, you know, a lot of love in the sport. Tight. Um, you can see how tight it was. Um, but that's how he plays. Yeah. He's, he's right on the shoulder, and that's what you've got to do. You've got to get people like Xhaka playing the ball through the areas where you might get it cut out into the people like Xhaka, um, to Saka, who can then release Aubameyang and cross it for Lacazette. So, those are the chances you have to take. Otherwise, you end up just passing across people all day. Yeah. And that's what West Ham want. 
makes it comfortable for them. Yeah, what I like about Arsenal, they've always got players looking to penetrate, you know, always looking to run in behind. Even if they're on the edge of the box, that you see with the second goal, mm. they've got runners. And when you have runners, it, it's a nightmare for defenders. They, they want to see the defenders in front of them. Mm. And there was a few times early in the game where they didn't find the passes, there were still runs in behind. This time they found the right pass. We saw a strong claim, of course, from Mikhail Antonio during Project Restart to stake his claim to be West Ham's first choice centre forward. And he got on the score sheet just seconds before the half time. You say that, you, 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 don't, you don't want to be too downhearted. They would have, the way they played last week um, and putting in a performance like this today, they, it, it would, it's a lot easier to get over, but still you would have wanted something out of the game simply because you can build on that. Yeah. And also, I suppose.